me, the rest is noise. Everything around us is noise, and the periphery is noise. You have to keep your eye on the ball, which is growing with legitimacy every single day all around us. As the price of silver is not doing a whole lot, you have the big money taking possession. I mean, doesn't you see the, the how that's so ironic? And that's really what's been happening for the last two years, three years off of the exchanges. Hold down the paper price, take possession of the physical. It's it, Everything's upside down as it pertains to the financial system. And and that's why I have such a hard time understanding. Well, I guess it's just the fact people don't understand gold it, largely because it's really liberation from all of this nonsense. BlackRock's redemption of 7.8 million ounces of silver from the PSLV is a clear indicator of the increasing institutional interest in precious metals. This move underscores the shift away from paper or derivative-based assets toward tangible stores of value, driven by concerns over the stability of the financial system and the desire to protect wealth from inflationary pressures. Andy Sheckman finds it ironic that over the past few years, large financial institutions and entities have been involved in what he considers a peculiar strategy. These entities have been actively keeping the price of gold and silver down while simultaneously increasing their holdings of physical silver. This situation may appear counterintuitive as one might wonder about the motives behind such actions. Furthermore, in the third quarter of this year, countries increased their gold reserves by an impressive 337 tons, according to a report by the World Gold Council. Andy sees that countries like Russia, India, Saudi Arabia, China, and major financial players such as BlackRock are significantly increasing their holdings of precious metals, especially silver and gold. Russia and China have accumulated large gold reserves since 2010 and have accelerated their purchases in recent years. Even the most influential entities in the financial world, including central banks, commercial banks, and major hedge funds, are strategically repositioning themselves. They are capitalizing on the general lack of awareness and integrity in media reporting, as well as the ongoing suppression of prices within the Western financial system. This strategic repositioning is reshaping the global economic landscape. Andy points out that silver premiums are currently at their highest levels since 2019. Despite the widespread anticipation of a significant surge in silver prices, this has not materialized as of yet. He suggests that the primary reason for buying silver is not necessarily to amass wealth, but rather to preserve it, especially as the dollar's value appears to be weakening from its current high levels. We will present clips from Andy Sheckman's interview with Liberty and Finance. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. The linear progression is my only focus because it is growing every single day with legitimacy. And, and I become more and more certain that the path that I have been walking for quite some time is the right one to be on. And not everyone has followed you for as long as some people have. And yes, I am guilty of being redundant because to me, the rest is noise. Everything around us is noise, and the periphery is noise. You have to keep your eye on the ball, which is growing with legitimacy every single day all around us. And, you know, when you talk about the elite who are always a step or two ahead, done again, I mean, BlackRock just redeemed almost 8 million ounces of silver from PSLV. Well, that's not something we've said very often. We talk about SLV, GLD, we talk about the LBMA, we talk about the COMEX, we even talk about the Shanghai Metals Exchange, but we're seeing copious deliveries off of these exchanges. Well, now we see BlackRock delivering almost 8 million ounces out of, or taking possession of, almost 8 million ounces out of PSLV. We see Russia increasing its gold reserves. If we are to believe the information the central banks are telling us, I think some of it's true. They're probably accumulating much more than they tell us. But they've increased it now to where it is the largest holdings in modern Russian history. So you have all of these countries and these institutions that are not only the biggest money in the world, but, you know, arguably closest to the information. Certainly BlackRock, the largest uh, hedge fund in the world, and, and, uh, and the Russian Central Bank at the cusp of, of um, you know, accumulating metal to break free from, from the Western hegemony. And the same thing is true of India and of Saudi Arabia and of China. These countries continue to load up on metal. So, yeah, I, I mean, I do. I think it's no surprise. And again, uh, 
you know, you don't you don't have to be much of an economist to understand that things are getting concerning in this country and uh, and around the world. So I think it just is logical that people are finally waking up to it. And even though they are waking up to it, most of them are waking up to it for different reasons than what we've been talking about, the same old information. Well, put it all together, and that same old information is really why people are waking up in a different way. I mean, it's it's the move away from the West and the Western system and, and the Western history in terms of its ideology, in terms of its morality, in terms of its its character. It's all breaking down globally, whether it be internationally or domestically, and the manifestation of all of this chaos, of, of the, the lack of harmony and unity and all of these things here domestically p- play into the de-dollarization globally. And whatever it is, it's waking people up. Uh, I think it's about time. And that's the only hope that we have is, you know, knowledge is power to take care of yourself and your family, get prepared Get out of the way of what's coming because the biggest money in the world, like the central banks, like the commercial banks, or the biggest hedge funds in the world, see exactly what's coming. And they're using the ignorance, I guess you could say, of the masses, the lack of um, integrity and honesty by the media, um, and the price suppression of the West to, to reposition while the rest of us, most of us, not those listening to you, Done again, but most people sit idly by and um, are, are going to get caught off guard by, you know, something when this when something triggers this next whatever it may be, whatever that next may be. So, yeah, the fact that people are waking up. Great. I think it's about time. And yeah, and these are the best premiums we've seen since 2019. They have not taken off yet. They haven't risen yet. If anything, they've stabilized at the bottom as gold is real close to its all-time high. I think it's the fact that silver hasn't really done what people expect it to do yet, and I understand that, because it's been the majority of this industry's business for the past three, four years. So you've got a lot of people that are a little bit, uh, uh, let's just say, disheartened by the lack of upside potential, or upside movement, rather, not potential, but movement. Remember, it's not why we're buying it. We're not buying it to get rich. We're buying it because it is wealth. It will exert itself. But at the expense of a dollar that starts to lose ground from its lofty highs that we find it at right now. In 2020, J.P. Morgan settled U.S. allegations of precious metals futures price manipulation from 2008 to 2016. Silver is also believed to suffer similar manipulation. Large financial entities are often accused of using short positions to suppress silver prices. And he believes that short-term manipulation of the financial system, like suppressing the price of silver, can lead to significant long-term consequences. Those responsible for these actions exhibit no fiscal restraint, continuously spending money, and increasing the national debt. Essentially, they are monetizing the Federal Reserve by purchasing the back end of the bond market without considering the long-term consequences. In Andy's opinion, this approach is ignorant and indicative of chronic dishonesty. Fast forward to September 2023, the public debt of the United States stood at approximately 33.17 trillion U.S. dollars, an increase of around 2 trillion from the previous year when it was around 30.93 trillion U.S. dollars. The U.S. debt ceiling is a major political issue, sparking heated debates between Democrats and Republicans. Andy warns that the growing U.S. debt could erode the dollar's global dominance as other currencies rise, attributing this to financial manipulations. Now, let's return to the interview. I mean, look, they're, they're manipulating in the short run, but the consequences or the damage that, that they're doing in the long run is horrific. These people have absolutely zero fiscal restraint. They spend money and go deeper into debt. In other words, monetizing the Federal Reserve, buying the back end of the bond market as if there will never be any consequences. And I think it's truly ignorant. And I think these people, chronic liars by the way that they have doctored the gauges uh, for measurement of things like inflation. Uh, you know, they, they, they talk, for example, you know, the strength in the dollar as an example. And you could say that that in many respects is illusionary, a country that is now 33.7 trillion in debt. And they've added more than a half a trillion dollars to the debt just in the month of October. But the strength of the dollar with this inordinate, unjustified, unbacked strength of the dollar 
is is what has brought the CPI down, which is a lie anyway, from 9% earlier in the year to 3% now. It's a lie. And when you look at the amount of debt that they are adding on to this, um, it's only a matter of time before the dollar loses its strength globally, as there are challengers that are chipping away at the dollar hegemony over and over and over again. We've discussed this, and that's coming. And, and is the just the fact that with every one of these manipulations, as Gregory's talking about, he's right. They're they're manipulating it into the end of the year. But but with every one of these uh, immoral acts, they 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 put us deeper and deeper and deeper in the hole. As an example, you know the con- the Congressional Budget Office is already projecting that by 2031. That's just a couple of years away now. What six seven years away? But the government will spend 100% of all the tax revenue that it brings in just on mandatory entitlement programs like Social Security and and the rising interest on the debt. And, you know, so that, that basically means that everything else that they do to run the government will have to be borrowed into existence. And, and that's just seven years away. And then let's not forget, in 2033, Social Security will be technically broke, insolvent, but it already is. It's over 70 trillion underfunded. And so I think that this becomes a really big problem. And when you understand that by these manipulations, that these uh, these short-term distractions that they're doing, uh, these artificial uh, purchases of the back end of the bond market um, to lower rates, and now you're going to see the, the yield curve start to re- invert again instead of uninvert because it was the back end rising that was uninverting the yield curve. It wasn't the fact that what we normally see is the Fed coming in and lower lowering the short-term interest rates. That's not happening. This is all more, um, it's just not natural. And the more that you do to, to mess with the markets and mother nature, if you will, the greater the consequences in the end at the expense of uh, future generations for sure, but this is accelerating to the point where this will be something that we're all going to witness here, I think, before very long as the rest of the world just becomes tired and tired and tired of manipulation, of deceit, uh, of of the transition, if you will, from Bretton Woods 2 to Bretton Woods 3. Bretton Woods 2, a system that you could argue has been dominated by uh, do not dominated by uh, the lack of transparency in debt instruments into one that will be transparency in commodities. And we're moving in the opposite direction that the, the, the rest of the world is doing. So if they're giving us a subsidy to buy gold and silver at these levels because they're going to try and make things look better than they are. The growing institutional interest in precious metals, as evident from BlackRock's substantial redemption of silver, reflects a broader trend away from paper assets. This shift towards tangible stores of value arises from concerns about financial stability and the need to safeguard wealth against inflation. What lies ahead for the global economy amid the increasing interest in precious metals and changing economic dynamics? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.